Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Satan is a big fat liar. Hello, I'm Pastor Sam and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I just had to say that. You know why I can say that? Because Jesus said it. Now, he didn't say the big fat part, but he said Satan is a liar. And here's what you need to know. John 8, 44 says that not only is he a liar, but he is the father of every lie that's hatched. I want to talk to you about three lies that Satan tells every young person. This message is tailored especially for young people. But I want you to have the entire message, and you can have that by calling me at 804 744 8881. That's 804-744-8881. Now, let me tell you what I want to do. If you call the number 804-744-8881, two things are going to happen. First of all, I'm going to send to you this message on CD in its entirety, absolutely free. Second thing is this. I'm going to ask you for a name of a loved one. Now, you may be a young person calling in. If that's the case, I want to know who you are. But it may be that you have a young person in your home or your family. Maybe you're concerned about a son, a daughter, a grandchild. Maybe it's a cousin. Maybe it's a nephew or a niece. But there's somebody that you love and you care about and you're concerned about, and you'd want me to pray for them. You don't even have to give me the first and last name. Maybe just a first name is good enough. Maybe you could tell me if they need salvation or healing or deliverance. But even if you can't do that, you don't feel comfortable doing that, would you give me a name so that when I go to prayer, I can lift that name up before the Lord, and God will know all about it. He'll know what they need, and he'll know exactly who they are, but it'll give me an opportunity to come into agreement with you to believe God to meet the most urgent need in the life of that young person. So call me now at 804-744-8881, and I want to send you this message, Satan is a liar, but really, it's about three lies that Satan tells every young person. One more time, the number to call is 804-744-8881. Let's get together now and go into that service because the power of God is moving. And I'm speaking on the subject, Satan is a liar. Here's the third thing. The devil tells young people that church isn't important. Can I preach just a little bit right here? Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail it against it. In the Old Testament, the gate of the city was the seat of all governmental authority. You have um, uh, Daniel. He was the prime minister. You know where his office was? In the king's gate. Remember Samson? He got ticked off with those people down there in Gaza, and he went down there under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and picked up the gates of the city and ran to top Mount Triumph and set them down and pandemonium swept through that one time proud city because brother Samson picked up the courthouse. He picked up city hall, ran off with it. That's what he's talking about. Uh, Boaz went down to the gate of Bethlehem to transact important business affairs. And so Jesus is saying, I'm going to build my, I'm going to build my church and you can rest assured that the combined forces of the seat of the devil's authority will never be sufficient to stop this church short of its divine goals and commission. Oh, I want to preach about 30 seconds if it's all right with you. The church of Jesus Christ is victorious. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And it's got nothing to do with what you see with your eye or what you hear with your ears. If God Almighty said it, you can depend on it. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Woman called this morning. I just happened to be in the phone room and I, I get the overflow and she was watching television. She said, Oh, I, that made my day. She said, I love that preacher. Oh, he is preaching now. He is preaching right down my alley. Oh, I love to hear him preach and expound on things that are happening in the world today. Not many people will preach it like he preaches it. I said, Guess who you talking to? You got me on the phone? 
Oh, she said, I love you, Pastor Sam. Thank you for telling it like it is. I know when you look around sometimes, you think, well, nobody's telling the truth about this anymore. Everybody's trying to accommodate folks. And it's all about politics. And it's all about trying to make everybody happy. I ain't trying to make you happy. I'm trying to make the Lord happy. Amen. And I got to tell you, it doesn't matter how many people are backslidden, how many people are sinning in the church. The good news is the church of Jesus Christ is a victorious church. Hallelujah. Woo, I'm preaching better than you letting on this morning. He said, I will build my church. The church doesn't belong to me. It belongs to him, and it doesn't belong to you. I remember one time I was pastoring a church. We had about 4,000 members, and I thought, man, things couldn't be any better. And we decided to, to build a uh, fence. One of the most difficult things I'd ever done. We're going to build a fence for our daycare kids. We had about 250 daycare kids. And where they were out to play was about 100 yards at that time, this old location, to a busy street. And when I saw that, I said, we can't do that. We got to. And I announced to the church, we're going to put up a, a privacy fence. Oh, you should have heard people talking about it. We ain't having no fence in front of our church. Our church is a, is a model. Our church is so beautiful. And, and people are, have passed by this church and expressed how beautiful they thought it was. And we can't put up a fence. And I tried to have a meeting with them. Look, folks, it's going to be a nice fence. It's going to be a privacy fence. We're going to put the name of the daycare in front so they'll know this is a playground. And we're going to, oh, no, we can't have a fence in front of the church. And one fella got up and he said, I'll tell you something. I've been here for 40 years and we ain't going to have no fence in front of my church. I said, well, I just got here, but this ain't your church. Amen. <laughs> and we put the fence up and it's beautiful and everybody forgot about it. Isn't that funny how people, all of a sudden they'll take a fence. Oh, it's my church. At my church, we don't do it this way. Let me tell you, this is not your church and it's not my church. This is the church of Jesus Christ. And because, oh, somebody better say amen. And because this is the church of Jesus, he put everything in it we need. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the work of the ministry, the edifying the body of Christ and the perfecting of the saints. The gifts of the spirit are in the church. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gifts of faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues and interpretation of tongues. Everything we need, everything we need is in the house. Hallelujah. And that's why he put you in the house. I know some people can't get along with anybody. Mm. There's a man shipwrecked. He's on, a, he's on a deserted island. He was out there for 10 years. He thought, nobody's ever going to find me. Sure enough, one day, a rescue boat pulled up. And they got out of the boat and said, sir, how long have you been here? He said, 10 years. 10 years, and you survived. Captain of the rescue party said, what's that building over there? He said, that's my house. That's where I live. He said, well, what's that building over there? He said, I built a church. You built a church, and there's nobody on the island but you? Yeah. I love the Lord so much. I built a church, house of worship. They got in the boat and went around the other side, and there was a, another building over there, and the captain said, what's that building? He said, oh, that's that church I used to go to. <laughs> he couldn't even get along with himself. You better love the church because Jesus loved it and gave himself for it. Ooh, I sound like a 12-year-old right there. Did you hear my voice break? For it. You love the church? Turn to somebody and say, I love the church. And I'm not kidding. Either. He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Now, why do we need a church? Some of you especially need a church. It's a memorial service where believers meet to commemorate the love of Jesus. It's a family reunion. How many of you in the family yeah. represent? Where the family of God meets each week for encouragement and fellowship. The church is a classroom where young and old alike can learn how to live for Jesus in a troubled world. It is a billboard where we declare to a lost and dying world that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the church is a victory celebration where the saints joyously celebrate their redemption through praise and worship. We need the church. 
Get behind your church, young person. Love your church. Support your church. Don't be obstinate. Don't be just trying to be a jerk. I don't want to do that. That's not the program I want. Just learn to love one another and appreciate one another. Appreciate the effort that people put into things. You know, I, I thank you for the times you've said to me, that was a good sermon. Both times you said that in eight years has really <laughs> thrilled me. It doesn't hurt to just tell somebody you appreciate them every now and then. Amen. Amen. How many times when you hear somebody sing like you did today, and maybe lead a song and the choir back them up or they sing a solo, how many times do you just let them walk by and not say, that was a good job? You ought to tell them. You ought to brag on them. How many times you know somebody's been working in a ministry behind the scenes and maybe they don't get their chance to come up here and be seen? Maybe most people don't know what they're doing, but you know, shouldn't you go to them and tell them, I really appreciate you. Everybody's got something to offer. I was just a few days old when my parents brought me to the house of God and dedicated me to the Lord. I was born in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. How many Tar Heels we got here? Represent, come on now. That's right. You, you know what? You can always tell somebody uh, from North Carolina. You can't tell them much, but you can tell them. <laughs> I was born in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. My mother was there, and I wanted to be close to her. And I was born in that hospital on the hottest night in 32 years of history. So I was born in the heat, you know. And I love, I love North Carolina. But you know what? It was close enough to Virginia that I realized I needed to get back here because this is where God wanted me. I got here as quick as I could. I wasn't born here, but I got here as quick as I could. But one of the neat things about being born into a Christian family that loved the Lord, spirit-filled, is that church became the center of all of the activities. And it was enough. It was, listen, church even was our entertainment. You know, one of the things that was entertaining that we don't do now, we used to do this. Somebody gets saved on a Sunday night and said they were called to preach, we'd ask them to preach on Wednesday night. Now, if that's not entertainment, that's better than anything on TV. When somebody gets up to preach and they ain't even never read the Bible. And we'd sit there and <laughs> start giggling, Mama Peach, you don't use laughing, day, doing the best he knows how. I loved the church. I loved everything about the church. I loved, how many remember homecomings? Woo, dinner on the ground. My Lord, we used to eat, man. And you know what? <laughs> Here we are in 2018. We should have all died. Think about it. Salmonella, you come to church early on a Sunday morning and put all the stuff in the trunk and you don't have it till two o'clock. <laughs> we should have all been dead. I, I passed a woman one time that ate so fast and talked so much that she swallowed a wasp and it bit her on the way down and we had to pray for her, her throat swelled up. And we used to have fun, I'm telling you. I love church. I love the singing of church. We had a family that came down out of the hills when I was living in Georgia. And uh, there's a son and mom and daddy and uh, they'd sing that song. Heaven supernal, heaven eternal. Oh, I feel like, feel like traveling on. And she looked at her son. She said, Junior, give me your gum. And she'd take her his gum and put it behind her ear while they were singing. Now that's entertainment. <laughs> that, is, that is classy entertainment, right? There. I don't care who you are. I love going to church. I don't understand these big billboard signs that says, we're the church for people who don't like church. They didn't go to church where I didn't went to church. And you know what I found out? There was no such thing as a generational gap because of the people that seemed to dote on me were some of the older people. I had a teacher. Now, I'm ashamed to tell you this. It just shows you how bad I was. See, preacher's kids are some of the worst kids in the world. You know why? They got to play with member's kids. We had moved so much, I had a chip on my shoulder, and I went to my Sunday school class, and I was 10 years old, and somebody said something to me I didn't like, and I punched him right in the nose. 
And he was a pretty big boy, so he punched me right back in the nose. And I punched him in the nose, and he punched me in. And blood started flying, and we got on the ground and wrestling, and that boy became my best friend. I don't, if, you, if you have somebody you want to be a good friend, punch him in the nose right now. Just right where you... Just, <laughs> you'll become great friends. Works every time. Poor Brother Tolls, he didn't know what to do. He was in a panic, and he grabbed both of us, picked, boys, we're not going to have that here. You sit down over there. Now, you don't do that again, or I'm going to tell your daddies, and you know what will happen. Now, now, it doesn't mean anything. Back then, it meant something. I'll tell your daddy. So we sat there and became good friends down through the years, and he's still my Facebook friend. But Brother Tolls took an interest in our, us boys. Oh, he would talk to us about Jesus and sometimes you'd see tears coming up in his eyes. Most of the time, though, he's fun. And he talked to us about things that he used to do as a boy and how he used to, you know, live out in the woods and all the things. And boys, guys get big. Oh, yeah, oh, I can do that. When he died, I was in college and I heard about it and I said, I got to go to that funeral. And I made my way back down that little town, went to the funeral. Guess what? I never even knew he was married. He was married to a high flute woman who was ashamed of him, ashamed of him because he's Pentecostal. See, there was a day when people were ashamed of us and she didn't want anybody to know that she was married to a holiness man. But she showed up all high flute. I didn't even know who she was. She didn't want anybody to know. I'm thinking he had to go home and live with that all the time. And he's talked to us boys about, you know, marry the right woman. <laughs> Probably just anybody, but don't do what I did. But see, I never knew he had a problem or a care in this world. But he took an interest in me. We had a man I called Uncle Ernest. Uncle Ernest had been a drunk for 40 years. Uncle Ernest, do you know what Solox is? Some of you guys will date yourself. You, you know what that is? They used to, the bums used to pour it through bread. Or they'd take even shoe polish and melt it down and, and, and strain it through a loaf of bread just to get a little bit of alcohol and they drink it. Now he worked at the cotton mill, but on the weekends, Uncle Ernest went down under the railroad trestle with the other drunks and never came back home until Sunday night late, get ready for work. He did that for 40 years. But one day God gloriously saved. See, don't ever give up on anybody because one day God gloriously saved Ernest, baptized him in the Holy Ghost and changed his life. And that's where I met Ernest. And I called him Uncle Ernest. And he told me how to pray. And every Sunday morning, he'd say, go with me. And we'd go to what we call the upper room. You know what the upper room was? It was in the attic of the church, and it's where they put all the junk. But we would meet an hour before church. I was 16 years old. And we would meet an hour before church and push all that stuff out of the way and get down in there and pray. And I don't mean it was just a little now I lay me down to sleep prayer. He taught me how to pray. He taught me how to get hold of God. And every day he'd say, now, Sam, you got to remember the devil will drag you down to hell if you're not careful. You keep your eyes on the Lord. You keep following the Lord. You serve the Lord. He'd take me camping. We went down on the broad river and we'd go camping a lot of times. And he'd tell me stories of how he used to be a drunkard and the Lord saved him. Never did glorify the devil. But always talked about the grace of God and the love of God. People like that poured into my life and made a difference in my life. Did you know, young person, that this church is full of people just like that? But you've never given them an opportunity to speak into your life. we got a wonderful prime timers ministry. Cracks me up. Some of these people say, you know, your church is a little too old for me because I like just a young church. You don't need just a young church. You don't need just 20-somethings. Hello? You need somebody's had some experience. You need somebody's been there, been somewhere. And we don't want to forget about the youth. We need their enthusiasm. We need them too. But guess what? We need each other. Don't ever let the devil tell you church is not important. Don't ever let the devil tell you you don't need church and you can make it on your own because we need each other and we love one another. I was telling about Bob and Betty Ann. I got to tell you a few times, Brenda, I had to find a quiet place because tears started rolling down my face. And I said, here's a certificate. He'd been to the Holy Land again and again and again, Brother Schmidt. 
He even qualified as a tour guide. I looked at this certificate and that certificate over the years. I went to learn how to pray for people who were sick. I went to learn about ministry and how to love people and how to care for people, how to be more effective. Sometimes when we get older, that stuff just becomes garbage. But it's always important to remember that even if you have to throw that in the dumpster, that's still who you are. Nothing can ever erase that. Hello? And when we fail to celebrate people like that, we've made a colossal mistake. Hello, church. Are you, are you listening? Talk to me, somebody. We've got to learn to appreciate one another. I appreciate every young person today for the potential they hold. There's no telling what they're going to do. There may be somebody that was standing up on this stage will one day be a president of the United States. I mean, if Donald Trump can do it, anybody can do it. There may be somebody up here that'll become a doctor and discover a cure for cancer. There may be somebody. I went to a young fellow's game last night or yesterday afternoon. He's a sophomore. And he is working in the children's church this morning, Wyatt Kistner. And he is a sophomore and on the starting team. And they won the state final soccer championship last night. And he's the goalie. That kid has some skills, some wicked skills. Someday he'll have a full ride of scholarship somewhere because of his athletic ability. Somebody maybe that was standing up here would one day become a professional athlete and make millions and millions and millions of dollars. And please don't forget me. When you do, <laughs> so who knows? I love you for your potential, but I love the senior saint for your experience. Your experience is invaluable, it's priceless. We need one another. It's time for us to pray. Will you believe God with me? I'm convinced that I can pray a prayer under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that God will hear and answer, will take you right into the throne room of God. So pray this prayer with me right now. You ready? Pray it like this and say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know that Satan is a liar and his lies are designed to lead me away from the love of God. I know that you love me and I know that you care about me. So Father, in Jesus' name, have mercy on me. Forgive me, save me, deliver me, set me free, make me your child, and have your way in my life. And by your help and grace, I will live for you until Jesus Christ comes back or calls me home. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, glory to God. If you prayed that prayer, I want to hear from you. Call me now, 804-744-8881, 804-744-8881, and we're going to pray for you again. So call that number, please. Do it right now, because when you do, I want to send to you absolutely free the entire message. It's called Satan is a Liar. Really, it's called th uh, Three Lies that Satan Tells Every Young Person. So, if there's somebody, maybe you're that young person, but maybe there's a young person in your life, you want them to have it, just let me know. I'll send it to them absolutely free. How's that? Hey, one more thing. When you call, give me the name of a loved one that's a young person that I can pray for. Maybe you have a grandchild. Maybe it's your son or your daughter, a brother or a sister, somebody you really love and care about, a nephew or a niece. I want to pray for that person. You don't have to tell me anything you don't want to tell me. But if you just give me a name, if it's just a first name, I want to pray. Maybe they need salvation. Maybe they need healing or deliverance or victory. Maybe they need to be set free from drugs or alcohol. But if you'll share with me that name, I promise you that when I get on my knees to pray, I will call that name in prayer. But I won't know to do it unless you call me. Now, somebody said, well, how will God know who it is? Let me tell you. God knows all about that situation. And if you'll just give me a name, it would just be an honor for me to come into agreement with you as we pray together. So again, the number to call is 804-744-8881. 804-744-8881. After you give your heart to Christ, you better find a good church, a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled church. If you're in the Richmond area, why not join me this Sunday? 
for two full hours of praise and worship ministry from the Word of God and always a time together in His presence around the altar and it starts at 10 o'clock. Remember this, the last Sunday of every month, we have an additional service at 6 o'clock. Why not come and join us? You'll be blessed. You'll love it. That's last the last Sunday in every month, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And don't forget all of our, service, our, live, our services are live streamed over Ustream and Facebook. In the middle of the week, you can find us here in our Family Enrichment Night service beginning at 7 o'clock. At 8.30, we're walking out the door. But during that hour and a half, it's just power packed. It's fun. It's exciting. It's relevant. There's something for every age group and every member of the family. The whole family is invited to Family Enrichment Night service. Hey, go to our website, will you? VictoryTab.org. That's VictoryTab.org. And check out our 24-hour radio internet network called Victory Battle Cry. I think you'll love it. There's prophecy teaching and gospel preaching. Uh, there are programs that are designed to help you with your finances. There are programs that will help you about uh, deal with the, the problems of stress in, in, in life and how to raise your home, your family. Uh, problems in the home. It's just something for everybody. So I think you'll love it. And, and by the way, great music as well. So check it out. Again, if you like the message called Satan is a Liar, Three Lies Satan Tells Every Young Person, call me at 804-744-8881 and be sure to share with me the name of a, a young person you'd like for me to pray for. And I'll do that faithfully. Until we're together again, just like this around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. This program has been brought to you by Victory Tabernacle, located on Genito Road in Midlothian, Virginia, and Johnny Rockets Restaurant. Two convenient locations in Short Pump on West Broad Street and Hancock Village in Woodlake. The place for great shakes and great burgers. Our daily special includes any burger on the menu for $6.99 with the purchase of a drink or a soft drink. We also offer unlimited fries with every meal that's purchased. And don't forget the kids, we have a full kids menu. Also, kids eat free all day Monday through Thursday with each adult meal that's purchased with a drink or a shake. So stop by Johnny Rockets. Also find us at johnnyrockets.com. Bring your church bulletin on Monday or Tuesday nights between 5 and 8 and receive 20% off your meal. Kids are vital to the success of any ministry. They're significant to God's plan, and they are an essential part of Victory Tabernacle. At Victory Tabernacle, for ages 4 through 12, we have an exciting faith-based children's ministry. We have energetic praise and worship, revelant Bible studies, intriguing multimedia, interactive audience participation, fun games for all ages, characters and puppets to bring forth the message, prizes and giveaways for competitions. We have registration and a security team to keep our children safe experience by participation, videos and special guests, appearances by our senior pastor, Pastor Sam Luke, special activities and events for our children throughout the year. We also have a children's blessing service and special services with guests that come in from around the world and also family fun days and carnivals. Every Sunday, 10 a.m., the doors open at 945.